What's going on, guys? Tuesday recap video. Uh, we set a new record. We set a record for the most frustrating winning week in football that I've ever had. And I've done this for over a decade, so that speaks volumes. I can't wait for you guys to hear what I lost money on. I want to hear your opinions in the comment section below. Um, <laughs> look, we all we all lose bets, right? Every single week that you bet on sports, you are going, I mean, very small. I'm talking, e even after doing this for a decade, I, I feel like I could almost count uh, on my fingers how many times I've actually had a, a sweep, right, over a full weekend of betting. You always lose bets, right? You're always going to lose some of them. You can never expect to win all your bets. You can never even expect to win three quarters of your bets. But my God, the way I'm losing bets this year, um, it's insane. It's, uh, it's um, it, you know, I'm recording this video very late at night. It's close to my bedtime. I am pretty low on energy. Uh, I was about to yell and and scream in this video today and stand up on my chair and act a fool in today's video. Um, and I do still want to do that. And maybe I will by the time I get to the end of today's video. This could be a really, really classic, maybe an all-time top five dance rants. We'll see how crazy we get in today's video. The point of today's video, though, uh, is just simply to let you guys know what bets I actually submitted and put my money on. You guys know that every single week, I predict every single game in college football and then in the NFL, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I go over both of those slates. So obviously look forward to those videos tomorrow and the day after that. Uh, but the, the recap videos, it's nothing more than, you know, out of all these, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of games every single week to let you guys know where my money was actually submitted. What bets did I find? And I was confident enough to actually submit my money on. So we're going to go over those in today's video, get you up to speed, and just get you out of here. So if you guys are new to the channel, definitely hit subscribe so you get notified when those next two videos come out uh, with my college football week seven and NFL week six predictions. But I think we'll just start with this, man. Let me just pull this up here, um, and I'm just going to read this off to you. I mean, this is just... <laughs> I mean, what do you even say about this? I cannot, you guys have got to leave me some comments. I need some type of, 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 I mean, what do you guys think about this shit? This is nuts. Okay. Let's just start. Uh, let's see Vanderbilt plus 23 and a half. We put 1.1 unit on that cash it with ease. I even said very specifically last week in my college football prediction video that Vanderbilt was a live dog. I, I was pretty adamant on that being an upset you know, is what it is. Did I actually bet Vanderbilt on the money line? No, I did not submit a single penny of my hard-earned money on Vanderbilt to pull the upset off despite the gut feeling. Uh, but yeah, is what it is. So we cash with Vandy. Georgia, we took Georgia minus 13 and a half for the first half. I thought off the loss, they would be a little bit more excited to play in the first half. It was a little bit sloppy. It was close, but they come up short. We lose there. The one point unit, 1.1 units gone there. By the way, that Vanderbilt uh, wager, again, 1.1 units minus 113 odds, so we gained a unit there. Uh, next one down, Michigan State plus 24 and a half, cash it. Uh, a little bit over a half unit play, nothing big there. Gain 0.6 units. Pittsburgh, money line, uh, cash it. We put, uh, what do we do? We put 1.1 uh, units on that money line at minus 135. Gain 0.8 units. Stanford. Plus eight and a half, not even close. I don't know. I mean, even with the quarterback situation, I thought Virginia Tech was going to be very, very flat coming off that Miami, uh, the end of that Miami game that we all saw. So way off on that one is what it is. 1.1 units down the drain. Bye. Arkansas plus the points. Easy cash. Also called that outright. I know a lot of you guys were very, 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 very adamant in the comment section. Uh, you can scroll back to the video and look at the comments down there. A lot of you guys were on me for my Arkansas pick. And uh, I do believe I was even mentioning Arkansas with the upset, uh, which ended up being true. So Arkansas plus the 14. That was way too many points. Cash that one with these. Again, gaining unit there. Kansas, Kansas football on the road to Arizona State. A very sharp bet. Put 1.1 units on that. And I'm disgusted that it didn't hit, man. I mean, they looked like they were going to win the game with ease. And we still had three points in our back pocket, and it still comes up short. So that's a brutal one. 1.1 units down the drain. Bigger plays, 2.4 unit plays. We had two of them. We had Nebraska against the spread. Nebraska minus 6.5 at minus 120. Cash with ease, plus two units. Washington money line over Michigan. 
at minus 120. Gain two units. Nice. And then we had a teaser. We had Kansas plus eight and a half. We had Nebraska down to just half of a point, basically just to win the game. 2.2 units. Cash it. Gain two units. Uh, again, minus 110 odds, 2.2 units risked, two units gained. Um, easy cash. Money line parlay, Nebraska and Georgia Tech. Absolutely sweat free, easy cash. 2.4 units risked on that one at minus 120 odds, gained two units. So I just went over a very big list. I just went over 11 wagers, eight and three, up a shit ton of money. How could this possibly? have gone wrong in college football. Well, let's start with this. A Tennessee live bet. A live bet on the Tennessee Volunteers minus three and a half. We saw Arkansas. We saw a lot of opportunities. A lot of opportunities, especially in that first half, where it just seems like, man, you had to have that type of play to finally beat uh, a team like Tennessee and pull the upset off. I thought, you know, coming up short on those critical plays, uh, the fourth downs, the just everything that happened, um, through the first portion of the game, I thought it was going to cost them. So we took a shot at a great price. We took Tennessee live. I believe it was at halftime, minus three and a half, way, way down off the original spread uh, for 1.3 units. Again, we already had money on Arkansas. We try to middle it. Every, you know, every professional does that. We had a great price on Tennessee. And for a while, it looked like it was going to cash. It looked like we were going to hit both just until like the end of the game. Um, so really disappointed that that live bet didn't come through. So now we basically get to the two final plays. There's only two plays I haven't gone over yet for college. The biggest ones. Um, this is this is where it's just like, um, God, this is so this is so unbelievable. We had an alternate line. I do these alternate line parlays, man. I use FanDuel. Sometimes they use DraftKings. Sometimes they use Caesars. But I, I mainly use FanDuel. They have the widest range of alternative lines that you can choose from. I find three or four, sometimes up to five or six, but generally three or four games where I, I like a team to cover. Like I'm already confident that they're going to cover the spread. But I take an alternative line way, way, way far away from the original number and I pair three or four, maybe five together to come close to, you know, even odds or right around even odds. And I put a decent chunk of money on it. And, and, and these alternate line parlays have just cashed so often for me for so many years. Um, we lost a 3.75 unit parlay just because Missouri couldn't stay within 17 and a half. I think it was a, I, I can't even remember the legs. It was um, a couple alt spreads. I think an all over in one of the games and Missouri plus 17 and a half. They were small underdog on the road to Texas A&M. I thought it'd be one of the best games of the day. I thought we were going to have a great game to watch close game. Maybe Missouri wins. Maybe they don't. I wasn't really confident on who would actually win the game. That's why I put Missouri as my free pick on the whiteboard for the week. I thought they would pull it out, but worst case scenario, maybe Texas A&M has a good game. They do have a great home field advantage. You know, maybe they sneak it out and they win by field goal at the end. Maybe they win by a touchdown in overtime. I don't know, but 17 and a half fucking points. And Missouri blows the parlay. The other three legs hit with ease. It was it was an all over in the Oklahoma State West Virginia game. It was like over forty five and a half or something. It was uh, whatever. I'm not going to take time to remember the legs. The only leg that lost almost a four unit play. Missouri plus seventeen and a half. He couldn't cover seventeen and a half. Holy shit! That is an insane way to lose. Alt line parlay number two. After that one lost, we basically took the same legs or, or, or what legs that were left in the original one that I still liked for the afternoon, added a couple more. Uh, again, that alt uh, over in the West Virginia game, um, I believe uh, an alt spread with Nebraska, like Nebraska, like plus four and a half. Uh, I think Georgia Tech, like plus three and a half. And then Oklahoma State, off back-to-back -back losses at home. They've never lost three games in a row in like nine fucking years under Mike Gundy. They're playing West Virginia, 
who I'm very familiar with. I went to school there. I was at the Penn State game. I follow the Big 12, probably the closest out of every conference, and West Virginia, the closest out of every team in the Big 12. West Virginia's defense is not even top 100 in the country. It's pathetic, and they have injuries. And Oklahoma State, (laughs) you guys got to hear this, Oklahoma State plus 14 and a half in Stillwater in the afternoon versus West Virginia. Oklahoma State could not keep the game within two full touchdowns. They got blasted, uh, just couldn't do anything on offense. And um, that was the only leg that ruined a four unit parlay. That was at plus 115 odds. So that would have been almost, that would have been like over four and a half units gained. So we went basically eight and three, lost a live bet on Tennessee for 1.3 units. And then because Missouri couldn't cover 17 and a half, and because Oklahoma State couldn't cover 14 and a half, we lose about eight units versus gaining like a little over eight units, a 16 unit swing. So overall for the week, college football, eight and six record, and we lost 0.9 units, a little, just barely under a full unit of profit, a uh, full unit of, of, of betting lost. So about down one unit despite a winning record, despite getting so much red, despite annihilating my straight bets. I mean, I'm so dialed in. I get so much right. And two anomalies was the difference. Um, I mean, you just give us those crazy results back. Missouri being half competitive and Oklahoma State at home being half competitive. You give us those two back and you're looking at what? 15 units of profit in college football and a record of 10 and four. I mean, we were right on the fringe of, of of just a fucking massive Saturday, getting just about everything right. And honestly, if those parlays hit, I would not even have tried the live bet on Tennessee. I thought it was a good opportunity with the with the lower number, a great value play, the momentum kind of swinging back to Tennessee. I thought it was a good idea just to throw a unit, see if we could get a little back from those parlays. Um, so realis- realistically, we would have went probably like 10 and 10 and three or something up, uh, you know, over 15, 16 units in college football. If just Missouri and Oklahoma state were even remotely competitive, um, brutal eight and six down 0.9 units NFL, uh, Browns plus three and a half. <laughs> I mean, we had closing line value line closes at three. Feeling pretty good, right? No, not even close. Uh, Deshaun Watson, he's done. He 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 cannot be in the NFL. Get him the fuck off the field. That is pathetic. Look, Washington's offense. It was no surprise. Washington or, or the Browns' offense, as bad as it's been, if there was going to be any game for them to try to get right, it'd be against Washington's D. I love Jaden Daniels. I love the offense for Washington. That defense sucks. Uh, the Browns made it look good, so that's insane. Browns plus three and a half, 1.1 units lost. Packers minus three, 1.1 unit wager, gained a unit. Dolphins money line. I actually ended up betting the Dolphins. Dolphins was the, the free pick of the week. We went one and one with our free pick, so we're still sitting at uh, the updated record. Seven and three on the whiteboard this year. That's 70% over 10 wagers, so hopefully you guys appreciate that. I'll update you with two more whiteboard winners this week, of course. Uh, but we did end up putting money on the Dolphins after I did some more research. And I'm like, yeah, that's the right side. I even told you guys in the video, it'd probably flip from a small underdog to a small favorite. Miami with the better roster. Somehow, some way, they'd find out to win an ugly game. That's exactly what happened. So we cashed the Dolphins. Uh, Bills and Texans under 47 and a half. Cash that one. Um, and then here's where it gets. Uh, actually, let's not, even, let's not even talk about the losses yet. Let's just keep going. Uh, teaser Packers plus three Jaguars plus three at minus minus one twenty one point two unit play cash it gain a unit there Seahawks. Well, this is a loser. I'm going to keep going with the winners and then we'll go over the losers Cowboys live bet on the money line cash that one 3.9 units. Um, and then two same game parlays, massive same game parlays. Uh, we integrated both Sunday night football and Monday night football with the parlay. 
Um, alt spread with the Steelers, alt spread with the Chiefs, alt under in the Chiefs game, a couple props in the mix, cash uh, a three unit play at plus 108. And then the Monday night, same game parlay that I've actually, ca- I've been doing so good on Monday night and Sunday night specifically with same game parlays. I only do them on Sundays and Mondays. The isolated games, I'd rather do a same game parlay, buying a little extra juice and getting a little extra cushion than straight betting it. Uh, these isolated games are so publicly bet. When I saw, I liked the Saints and everything that pointed to Monday night football kind of suggested five and a half with the Saints was the right side. That O-line, the injury report versus Kansas City at home, the D, Andy Reid a full week to prepare, and 80% of the public all over the, the underdog? No, I had a pass. I didn't have the balls to take Kansas City and go against the green with a straight bet. But we did absolutely cash a major, major same game parlay plus 108 odds on Fandles, a six unit max play. So we did hit that one. That was nice. That got us into profit for the week. Um, but check out these losses. So we had another teaser. We had one more teaser in the mix. It was an alt, it was taking the over down in that Baltimore Cincy game. I should have just straight betted that over. That was a home run over easy, but being almost 50 points, I just wanted to get it down a little. So we had Baltimore and Cincy over 42 and a half. And then we teased the 49ers down to minus one insane, man. You're up two scores against the Cardinals and you blow it at home. That is an insane loss. Crazy. 1.2 units down the drain because the 49ers blew it and couldn't even win the game. All we needed them was just a win nuts. Uh, Seahawks. We bet on them in the first half minus three and a half. That, that team's got some issues. Missed that one. That's a legit loss. That's when you just were like, yep, I was wrong. And they got gifted that fumble. Re- reco- I mean, without even that fumble return. Yeah, the Seahawks are just pathetic. The Giants, really? That is just pathetic. And they're awful loss. I thought we would have got a better effort out of them. We did a money line parlay. The Packers and the Seahawks. Little afternoon slate. Packers got the job done. Uh, Seahawks, again, we saw what happened. They blew it. So Seahawks blowing that game two units down the drain. Really thought that money line parlay would come through. Uh, you just make that kick at the end, get it to overtime, figure out a way to get the job done, beat the Giants. And we would have cashed nice there, but that sucks. And then uh, we lost a bunch of live unders. And when I say a bunch, man, heavy hitters. So three unders that I'm putting into, uh, you know, essentially one pick, like a live under, because uh, we just kept adding to the tally. So it's essentially one bet, just increasing our unit size. Um, 3.3 units, 3.9 units. And then we added 2.2 units, just kept adding to the live under, got all of them wrong only because the Cowboys scored, uh, in the last second. Um, absolutely brutal. I know I have a live, I know I told you guys I had a live bet on the Cowboys to win. That is nothing compared to the money that was on the unders. So I really like those unders. I, I thought the pit, I thought TJ Watt, it was just going to be a classic game, man, in Pittsburgh. It was low scoring. Cowboys just kept screwing up their opportunities. I thought it would continue all the way to the end. We kept dumping money in on that under. Again, that's almost 10 units down the drain on the live under. I usually don't add to a tally that heavily. Uh, but that game had the under, just the live under written all over it. And every time it would bump up a little bit, we just added the added the extra units on it, man. And it took that last second, last play, game-ending touchdown to ruin the live under. Again, almost 10 units lost there. So uh, with everything combined um, in the NFL for the week, seven and five uh, plus two units. Um, again, it really took, uh, a big Monday night football, same game parlay to get us in a profit. Um, just some brutal beats that teaser with the Niners that hurt Seahawks blowing it that hurt. So those ones really, really hurt. Um, but we hit some nice plays. We, we, we end the week on a high note plus two units in NFL seven and five minus 0.9 units, uh, in college eight and six. Um, overall, uh, 15 and 11 record up 1.1 unit of roller coaster over a weekend, tiny little bit of profit, gain a unit, gain a little bit of ground. <sighs> it's tough. It's tough. Missouri, 
plus 17 and a half. Oklahoma State plus 14 and a half. And these other beats, man, a last second touchdown by Dak against the Pittsburgh defense fired up on Sunday night football. Those three things combined, 10 units and, 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 and a 16, that's a 26. <laughs> that that is that is insane. 10 units loss versus about eight units gain. So about an 18 unit swing on the live under. Um crazy. I'm not I'm not even gonna just keep doing extra math. That's everything I bet the weekend. It was a roller coaster. We ended up with uh, a very, very small amount of profit. Again, guys, just barely over a unit of profit. Um, a pretty good record, and the straight bets are on fire. And and I got a lot of people on the client list that literally tell me whether it's their book that doesn't allow them or they're just not into the parlays. They're like, hey, man, I love your picks. You're, you're, you're spot on. You're dialed in week after week. You've, you've been having these terrible beats on your parlays, and, and you know, just keep rocking with the straight bets. And uh, I have a lot of people that stay on this, you know, stay on the subscription and they only take my straight bets and they don't do the parlays. They don't mix in the live bets. They stay away from all that other stuff and they just simply take my straight bets and uh, they're cashing week after week after week after week and they're cashing big. Um, so that's always an option, guys. You don't have to lock in every single bet. Sometimes it's, it, it's worth a small amount of dollars. Again, I'm only charging, you know, 89 bucks for an entire month of betting. So uh, it's worth its weight in gold just to know my straight bets, just to know what I'm thinking. You can make your own decisions on your own. I know some people that say they have my subscription along with two other people they trust in between just seeing where the opinions line up and where they don't. A lot of people are making big money out here. Um, but I'll tell you, that Missouri plus 17 and a half wouldn't hit, you know, the, we, we keep losing on anomalies, right? Like crazy things out of left field. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. You don't have to submit everything I give out. Um, it's up to you what you guys want to submit. You, you know, it's your money, do what you guys want. Um, but the strategy that I've been betting with has worked year after year, after year, after year. So am I going to let five frustrating weeks, four or five frustrating weeks of a sample size override year after year after year of cashing big on what has worked? Um, the answer is no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I've been doing for years, man. I've been doing this for 11 years now. Um, there's so much meat left on the bone and you guys see those swings in the unit size. Uh, if we just had some of those anomalies go right, we're talking potential for 25, 35, 50 units of profit in a single week is very possible. Uh, if we just start getting some clean results. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm actually going to hit it even harder this week. There's going to be some big plays. We're going to have a lot of volume and, uh, I'm going to go fucking off. I'm coming for blood, no mercy. Um, I'm frustrated and um, I've just done this too long. I'm not going to change a single thing. I'm going to keep doing exactly what has worked year after year after year. And uh, at the end of the day, it's not about the first week, the first five, the first 10, whatever the case may be. It's about your final tally at the end of football season. So if you're thinking about jumping off the subscription, jumping on, testing waters, this is a long-term game, and if you're just going to try to just pop in and out and in and out and just try to hit you know, someone's bets at the right time, if you think they're hot, if you think they're going to have like a good week, that's like gambling in itself, man. You got to just believe in stuff long-term. I do, and I believe this weekend is going to be a big weekend. I can't wait to have the next recap video week from today. That's all I got, guys. Full college slate will go over in tomorrow's video. I'll see you guys then.